Welcome to Around Kansas. I'm Deb Goodrich. And I'm Michelle Martin. And this is Fun Day Friday. So we have some great places for you to visit and experience. And just there's no end to all the cool stuff we get to do here in Kansas. So we're hoping that you take advantage of our expertise and our experience on how cool these places are and that you will follow suit. You know, Deb, when I moved to Kansas, I think I had the same impression that other people did, that it's a drive through, fly over, pass through state. And when I began taking weekend trips by myself and driving all over the state, as a historian, I wanted to experience the history of Kansas. And then I started realizing the ecological diversity, the landscapes, how they change. And I thought, wow, how can anyone just drive through Kansas or fly over it and not stop and not get off the beaten track and really explore what the state has to offer. And we've got ways to help you. And one of those that I wanna share with folks today, um, many of the chapters of the Santa Fe Trail Association are hosting events and um, doing different educational programs through our 200th, but they're also um, working on increasing visitorship to many of these sites throughout the years, you know, from now on, not just, not just this year, but forevermore. So one of the things that our Quivera chapter has created, this is fantastic. It's a Santa Fe trail, passport, and site book. This beautiful guide to the um, sites that are within the um, boundary, I guess, of the Quivera chapter. So it's a wonderful um, wonderful little guidebook, and we'll talk about some of these individually, but one of the ones that is included are Ralph's Ruts, and that is the photo that you see behind me, and you can see the folks walking out to see um, Ralph's Ruts, and that's named for uh, Ralph Hathaway. The Hathaway family has owned this site for I think three or four generations now. So that is uh, just one of the sites that's included. Another site that's included in this little passport book is a site that uh, is near and dear to both Michelle and myself, and that's Fort Zara. So um, Pawnee Rock, the Barton County Historical Society, it's just a fantastic little guide to all these sites. And, and I'll be talking some more about that. Well, you know, Deb, we're in the month of May now, and I mean, I can hardly believe it just seems like it was January yesterday, but here we are, it's May. And for those who know their Kansas history, um, they know that May was in the territorial period, a time in which we saw great suffering and loss and bloodshed, whether it be the Pottawatomie Creek Massacre in May of 1856, or the Meredicene Massacre that you see um, a sign pointing to the historic site behind me, uh, the Meredicene Massacre that took place on May 19th, 1858. And the Meredicene Massacre historic site is operated in conjunction with the Mine Creek Battlefield and they are Kansas State historic sites. And for me, probably one of the most emotional and powerful and impactful sites that I've been to in Kansas is the Meredicene Massacre site. That is one of the most poignant stories, one of the most tragic stories, honestly, in Kansas history. Um, and in my uh, Civil War in Kansas book, you know, I share that story um, uh, with, you know, the Mound City connections of one of the men who took part in that massacre and was later brought back and tried. And um, it's just one of the most powerful stories I've ever read. Um, the gentleman um, admitted his guilt, he acknowledged it and wanted to be um, executed, uh, asked to be executed and they insisted on a trial. And um, he, uh, they sentenced him to die. And then um, they 
uh, set the date for execution and he didn't want to wait that long. And he said he didn't have any good clothes to wear. And it's just so poignant. The people in the town of Mount City took up a collection, brought his wife and child from Missouri to spend his last hours with him and then um, give her money to go back home and have something to go on after his death. It's just one of the most, it's such a profound story. When we need more stories of healing and, and forgiveness. And that one is just one of the most powerful I've ever read. Just when you know, Deb, with the Meredithine Massacre and for our viewers who maybe are not familiar, on May 19th, 1858, um, a group of gentlemen uh, from across the Missouri line came over, uh, led by Captain Charles Hamilton, and they rounded up 11 men and took them to a ravine uh, that is now the Meredithine Massacre historic site. Uh, they made the men lay down in the ravine and they stayed mounted on their horses and began pointing their guns downward toward the men. And as the men looked up helpless, uh, Hamilton ordered the men to fire and some of the men stopped and hesitated right. because some of them realized what they were doing. Literally, it was the equivalent of, you know, shooting fish in a barrel. These men had no chance to defend themselves. Um, so we have pro-slavery men taking out free state men, rounding them up, marching them to a ravine and shooting them. One of the men, um, William Stilwell, uh, flashed a Masonic sign uh, that is known to Brother Masons because one of the men he saw on horseback was a Mason and that did no good. And they still emptied their weapons. Um, I think one of the most tragic stories connected to Meredithine is that of William Stilwell and his young wife, Mary Jane Gott Stilwell. And they had two children, Wallace and Josie. He was a teamster. He was heading to Kansas City. He was going to get goods and bring goods back. And they picked him up right off of his wagon. Uh, he hadn't done anything to anyone. He was simply going about his daily life and he's rounded up and killed. And his wife was outside working in the garden by their home. And she said around 11 o'clock that morning, this, for some reason, this almost mournful sound came across the air. And she said she had this premonition or foreboding of something horrible taking place. And it was at that time her husband was being shot. And I cannot imagine uh, as she's seen people, as the word spreads and people from Mound City and Trading Post are heading to the ravine and beginning to bring the men back, they bring back her husband. And there she That's is, devastating. I mean, a woman with two small children left to fend for herself. Um, in, in the book, Kansas in 1858 by William Tomlinson, he paints this horrific, tragic portrait of the burial of Stillwell in Mound City. Most of the victims are buried in one grave together uh, at the cemetery at Trading Post, but William Stillwell was buried separately. And she stands at the open grave and she is weeping. And conv I mean, she, her grief, she's convulsing with grief. And Tomlinson writes about how the wind blows her veil and you can kind of see her face and how lovely she is, but how sad and bereft and just racked with pain and, and grief. And he literally says that men, these strong men have to hold her back because she's screaming, you know, take me into oblivion with you. And she literally wants to crawl on top of her husband's coffin and go to the grave with him. It is one of the most tragic and harrowing yet human human stories that I've read in all of the, the annals of Kansas territorial history. It is so impactful. And this site, folks, if you go visit the site, you can walk down in that ravine and you can turn and stand and look up and actually put yourself in the position those men were that day and imagine what it would be like to know that in a few short moments, your life was going to come to an end. It is probably the most impactful site we've got in the state. 
one, you know, not all of those men died, which is why right. we have, um, you know, the, um, we know exactly who participated in this event because of, of the survivor story. And um, as Michelle said, when the shooting started, there were actually even a couple of men who left Hamilton who would not participate when they realized what was going to happen. They, they turned and left. Um, what Michelle described makes the story that I shared with you all the more powerful because nobody in the community in Mound City and, and the area there was left untouched by this tragedy and everybody knew somebody everybody was touched by the tragedy and for them to show such compassion to the widow of one of the men who took part in that is i think one of the most encouraging and uplifting stories in american history i i, I i'm really hard pressed to think of anything that compares to it it's just incredible yeah, it is and and um Mary Jane got still well, actually came back uh, when 35 years later, when they dedicated a memorial marker to the victims, she came back. It was the first and only time she traveled back to Kansas. And she said that it brought up such emotions and such grief, but that being there at the dedication of the memorial and being able to visit her husband's grave brought a sense of closure or a sense of peace. And she said after that point, she did not bear any more ill will toward those who had committed the act because she felt they had, many of them had most likely had to suffer with the consequences of their actions. And she knew that if they were Christians and men of God, that they they would suffer greatly in their souls. Their souls would be in turmoil and that was punishment enough. And so yeah, it, what, it's amazing. It it's really amazing. is. Folks, let's take a break. We'll be right back. In 21, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger-than-life personalities, and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is Around Kansas, the Friday Fun Day edition. I'm Michelle Martin. I'm Deb Goodrich. And we are here today to share with you some of our favorite places and the things you can see and do in the land of Oz. So I've been sharing sites, and I'm going to share some more with you from the Santa Fe Trail Passport and Site Book that the Quavera chapter of the Santa Fe Trail Association has put out. And the sites in this include Pawnee Rock, which is so historic in so many okay. ways, the Barton County Historical Society Museum. And I have to give a shout out, Barton County is the only county in Kansas named for a woman. Clara Barton, of course, who was a nurse in the Civil War, um, you know, there's just no end, you can talk about Clara Barton for weeks, 
but our dear friend um, Carol Newman Waski in Philadelphia portrays Clara Barton. And I would love to have her come out to Barton County and do that sometime. I think that would be so cool. Fort Zara, Plum Buttes, speaking of massacres, Michelle, uh, the Plum Buttes massacre was September um, 1867. Gunsight Notch, Ralph's Ruts, which are right behind me and the Kern Ruts, um, Cow Creek Crossing and Buffalo Bill's Well, the Coronado Quivera Museum, the Chavez murder site, the Fry Ruts, the Stone Corral, Camp Grierson, Swanson Swales, the McPherson Museum, the Caw Treaty Site, Fuller's Ranch and Running Turkey Creek Crossing. And that is all within the boundaries of the Quivera chapter of the Santa Fe Trail. So you can pick up your little passport book. You can visit those sites and get your little passport stamped. And um, you can message me to find out how to get that or go to our Santa Fe Trail Facebook page. Um, we'll have information on there. So all kinds of ways that we can let you know how you can find the passport and what a great guidebook to some tremendous history. Yeah, Deb, some of the sites there are fantastic. You mentioned Fort Zara, uh, probably one of the most overlooked uh, forts in all of Kansas. Um, you know, today when you go there, there's just a small park. You've got your markers there uh, because very little of the fort remains. Um, I know that was when we were working on Kansas forts and bases together, that was one of my favorite things was traveling all over Kansas and finding the locations of the forts, some like Fort Larned, Fort Scott, Fort Leavenworth, we've got lots of buildings. Others we have markers and others we have places where we have to use our imagination. And so I think that's really fantastic though, because it forces us to get out of our video on demand world and actually read and stand in places and really close our eyes and visualize and think. You know, so many of these sites are places where you can get outdoors. And that's something that's really wonderful. Even the museums, most of those have wonderful outdoor areas that you can explore or just give the kids a place to stretch their legs. So that's a, a really um, nice feature to exploring Kansas. And especially right now uh, with uh, the coronavirus still present in many places, having that ability to have outdoor locations where you can experience history is safer and also really enjoyable. And the next Friday Fun Day's place I would like to point everyone to is the Mine Creek Battlefield State Historic Site. It is located in Lynn County off of Highway 69, um, which is the Frontier Scenic uh, Military Byway. And if you have not been there, it is really a fantastic site. Uh, folks, let's face it. Not many people realize that the second largest cavalry battle of the entire Civil War took place in Kansas on the Kansas prairies at Mine Creek on October 25th, 1864. And it was a part of Sterling Price's ill-fated campaign that he thought he would uh, go from Missouri, he would cross over uh, in the Kansas City area, and he wanted to fight a series of battles from the Kansas City area all the way down to the Kansas border with the Indian Territory. Uh, he wanted to retake Kansas for the Confederacy and make his way into Indian Territory. And uh, really, the Battle of Mine Creek stops his forward progress and sends him back to Missouri, tail tucked firmly between legs, licking wounds because we have a small union force that is outnumbered about two to one. And they stand their ground at Mine Creek and defeat the Confederate forces there. And what's beautiful about the site is you've got original battlefield that is very well preserved mm -hmm that you can walk. There's a beautiful nature path that you can walk through the battlefield. It will take you to a lovely secluded location where the Confederate dead from the Battle of Mine Creek are honored. Um, you know, the young men who fought uh, 
for Missouri who were um, on the Confederate side of the battle. They were young men who had left home and family uh, and followed uh, Sterling Price and they fought and died there. And so there's a beautiful marker to commemorate uh, the deaths of those men there. Uh, you move your way along and you can actually uh, walk down and see the high banks and look down at Mine Creek uh, where the wagons tried to cross and were got stuck. And you can actually, there's a great big marker that shows you where the two lines of uh, forces came together and clashed. And it is one of the most well-preserved but beautiful sites in Kansas. Um, I've spent a great deal of time there. I was on the Mine Creek Battlefield Foundation Board for many years. And the image behind me is actually when we made Mine Creek famous for the rest of the world, uh, when Bill Curtis was producing Investigating History, he came back home to Kansas to tell the story of what he called the lost battle of the Civil War. And we recreated the battle there on actual battlefield which is very rare these days. So uh, definitely folks, visit the folks at Mine Creek. They have a beautiful visitor center, lovely exhibits, um, and they've got a nice little gift shop uh, because as, as, as you were learning from Deb and me, it's all about the gift shops. Yeah, yeah. And but that the money store. support that site. But you can take the kids, you can walk. They have beautiful waysides that tell you the stories of the military and the civilians impacted by the battle. So get out and stretch those legs and learn more about Mine Creek. It is a fantastic site, a state historic site. And as Michelle said, the walking paths are just wonderful. You can, you can take a short little hike or you can take a long one. And it's, uh, it's just phenomenal any time of the year. Well, I think we have given you a lot to ponder and certainly lots of travel plans to make. So Howdy, I'm Seth Hayes and welcome to my hometown from then to now. Council Grove has a rich history as deep as the prairie tall grass. Spend the day visiting 25 historic sites or explore the unique shops and restaurants or mosey out of town along the Santa Fe Trail. You all visit my hometown, Council Grove, in the heart of the Flint Hills. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're gonna find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bee place with a great big story and we'd love to have you.